Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, uh, also known as ETCG1 on this channel. However, I'm going to admit that I forgot my hat, uh, but here on ETCG1, uh, we talk about stuff. We don't do repair videos, but if you're looking for repair videos, I will put a link uh, right down there in the description of the Eric the Car Guy channel. You can go there and watch all the uh, repair videos you like. By the way, those come out on Fridays. Uh, for today's topic, I thought we would first get outside the shop for a little bit. I needed to take the Fairmont on a test drive and she's doing awesome. Just recently rebuilt the carburetor on it and it is running sweet. Yeah, that and I found a major vacuum leak with it. But today's discussion is about time management and it's something that, that I think comes up a lot working as a technician, but I, I think just in general, in life, uh, time management is something that we need to uh, we need to take into account and we need to to consider and we need to respect uh, probably is the best best thing I can think of working as a flat rate technician it's it's certainly something that that is directly related to your paycheck so the the better you can manage your time the more income potential you have uh, I had a distinct advantage at the places where I worked because I actually had two lifts and those of you that, that work in the business and only have one lift, you know what I'm talking about because you're kind of handicapped. For instance, a uh, customer comes in, they've got a car that uh, they're just maybe getting a service on, something like that. You pull the wheels off, you find out, hey, it needs brakes. And maybe there's a strut that's leaking. And maybe there's an exhaust leak. Maybe there's a couple other things you find that you would need to upsell, as we call it. Well. You write down a, a dubious list of things. Maybe you can go to the parts department, get your parts prices. Uh, you, you find out what your labor times are. Basically, you're putting together an estimate for the customer. Uh, then you hand that off to the powers that be. Uh, you may not be the person, while well, at a dealership, you're most likely not the person that's gonna call the customers directly. You hand it off to a service writer. The service writer then calls the customer. And guess what? Customer is MIA and cannot be reached at this time. Maybe they're at a meeting, maybe whatever. They're just not available. And you are stuck with a vehicle on your lift, half apart, and you can't really do much else. Uh, like I said, me having two lifts, this was a distinct advantage because I could bring in that car that could be a potential upsell vehicle or a car that needed to be checked out, get it checked out, get the estimate written, take it over to the service writer, then I got another empty lift. I can go grab an easy service, an oil change, or, or something that I know will not necessarily require an upsell, and efficiently get through my day. And I've, you know, I'm still waiting for the customer on the other lift, but it saves me the trouble of putting everything back together on that vehicle and getting it and putting it outside so that I can bring something else in. If I only have one lift, that's my, that's my only option. Uh, then no sooner do you get it outside and the phone call <laughs> comes in and the service writer's running out, waving the work order at you, I sold it, I sold it. And you're grumbling <laughs> because you just grabbed another work order and you were going to pull something else in. So it's not exactly efficient. I would say to work efficiently as a, as a flat rate technician, you would really need two, two lifts in order to do it, do it, do a good job of it or, or be able to have that level of efficiency. Uh, otherwise, Man, it's, it's, it's kind of rough just working off of one lift. Another instance where time management comes into play is when you're doing the repairs. Well, I say repairs plural. Uh, when you've got multiple repairs going on, I call these targets of opportunity. Uh, say you're doing a clutch job or, or yeah, or something like that, and you find that there's an exhaust problem and it just happens to be some exhaust you might need to disconnect while you're in the process of replacing the clutch. Well, it's a target of opportunity. You, you would fix the exhaust, maybe when the transmission's out of the way because it's a heck of a lot easier to access. Uh, you know, things like that, you know, and, and it's managing and budgeting your time. It's also, after a while, you, do, you get a little bit of experience under your, your belt and you get a chance to sort of see into the future a, a little bit. And you can look at the work order and you can say, well, here's a car coming in for a minor service that has like maybe 8,000 miles on it. And you're like, well, this is going to be an in and out kind of thing. It's going to be a quick and done. The same service on a vehicle that has maybe 150,000 miles. Well, there's potential you might find something with that. So you think to yourself, maybe I'll look at that car first so that I can find those potential upsells that I spoke of. And then you can present it to the customer then. So it, it becomes an art 
you know, and, and it's something of a science, but, but mostly time management is an art. And, and just to get through your day so that you can get all those things done. You know, you've got a major service here, maybe a timing belt, maybe a timing chain, maybe another one's got an oil pressure problem, maybe you need a clutch job on something, uh, maybe some other vehicle needs an engine, wheel bearings. You know, the list goes on and on as far as things that y you could encounter in a given day as an automotive technician. I've got to say that that's probably one of the most exciting things about working as an automotive technician. And, and one of the most debilitating things, because exciting in the sense that, you know, it's like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're going to get. Uh, debilitating in the sense that it's like a box of chocolates and you never know what you're going to get. And, you know, some things you'll be into and some things uh, maybe not so much. You know, some maybe get, things get rusty, you got to take it apart, it doesn't want to come apart or something breaks. And, uh, and then you have to manage your time accordingly. Uh, that's what this discussion is all about. That's what this all boils down to. It's it's how you manage your time, uh, not just as a technician, but you know those of you working in other professions. I'm I'm sure you'll you'll be more than happy to weigh in, and I'm I'm happy to have you do it. Uh, but I just wanted to throw that out there about time management. What are your experiences? Uh, have you had days where you've been able to to like really rake it in because you were able to manage your time well? I think I've said in another video. I, th I think my best day as a flat rate technician was 32 hours in a day. Uh, and to be fair, I took about a 10 minute lunch. I started almost an hour early and I stayed about an hour late. So there, there was that. And, and actually one of, the, one of the cars that I worked on was already on the lift and half apart when I walked in in the morning. So full disclosure on that, but that was my best day. I think a worst day, I think I walked away with like an hour and a half or maybe even a half hour for the whole day sat there and waited for the oil changes to come in. Uh, but anyway, time management. What are your experiences with time management? How do you, how do you manage your time to get through the day? And, and it doesn't necessarily have to be automotive related. We open the discussion to everybody around here. Uh, in fact, there'll be a link in the description to a discussion about this video if you want to do that. You can always comment in the comments is always an option. But if you have automotive questions, I would ask to head over to airthecarguide.com. There is a plethora of things available to you to help you with those automotive issues and a welcome video to tell you what they are. Uh, if you wish to connect with me socially, I can be found on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. Close each of my videos with be safe, have fun, stay dirty, and uh, let's just admire my wonderful work here. smooth. See you next time.